So um, I, I'm actually um, delighted to be part of this discussion today, and I think there's some themes that I heard in earlier presentations that you will hear reflected in my own remarks, uh, particularly around this question of a commitment to place and where um, profits are, or capital are friends, not masters, and where profit is enough but not maximized. Um, so I was asked specifically to talk about Mondragon, which is the name of a successful cooperative group located in the Basque region of Spain. They were founded in 1956 um, in a community that was once dominated by a single company that really prescribed the opportunities and, and um, advantages for people in a in a way that was extremely limited. And so so with the cooperatives, um, did we lose the PowerPoint? Yeah. So the cooperative advantage is that the cooperatives are in fact owned by their workers and the workers create policies through their governing council that serve to protect their jobs and to protect their interests um, both as, as workers and as members of their communities. Uh, so there's a strong integration um, that I've found over the years in researching them between leadership in the cooperatives and leadership in local government. Um, the fact is that Mondragon has gone through this recession just as other companies around the world have, but they're a good case example for us to look at because they treat labor as a fixed cost, which means that in calculating how you do business sustainably and successfully, um, using labor as a way to control and manage your costs is, is not on the table um, to the degree that it is in other countries and, and in other corporations. Um, they do have some elasticity, and this comes with 10% um, of the workforce, which is not, um, which, that's not, they are not members of the co-op. And, um, some of the uh, elasticity over the years as they've become more involved in international markets has been uh, through their um, overseas operations. So if you could move to the next slide. Um, Chris, could you, this is Gar. Could you just mention the scale so people know what we're talking about in terms of number of people? Yeah, I, I actually am happy to do that. There are um, about 83,000 workers in the group currently. Um, and of those, um, 37,839 work in the industrial cooperatives. And of those, 14,674 are currently working in 77 overseas plants. Um, so this is a fairly large, complex um, set of cooperatives that are connected through a, a, a central council that's the Mondragon Cooperative Corporation. And so they retain their integrity as individual cooperatives, but through intercooperative agreements, they are linked to each other. And I'll say more about that as I go further. So as you look at this slide, you can see that um, these, there are several slides here that I've taken from um, a lecture that uh, Mikhail Lezemis, who works with Odolora, developed. And there are... Um, the majority of the cooperatives are still in the industrial sector, but the, the one that's listed as a consumer cooperative, which is Eroski, is also a very large um, cooperative that does business throughout the, the, the nation of Spain. Um, so what's interesting for me in looking at Mondragon is that they're engaged in manufacturing, and many of their firms are working with the auto industry. Yet, unlike Detroit and other Rust, Rust Belt communities, they've not seen the same job losses and dislocation, which I think raises an important question about how do they, how do they manage this? Because we always get told that labor can't um, ask what they ask of through their unions because it would kill the companies. Well, the workers as owners ask that the companies look to preserve jobs, not at the expense of killing the company, but um, look for ways to strategically remain competitive in the same markets that companies here are competing in. But the group sees its future not in its sunset industries, but rather in developing and um, expanding into new, new technologies and knowledge-based sectors. In fact, when I was there 
um, a couple, a few years ago, they t actually told me there are more people employed now in knowledge-based sectoral work uh, through um, the research and development, the bank, the insurance company, and the university than there are in manufacturing. Um, so. Whereas in 1982, when I first went there, the emphasis was on creating good blue-collar work, today they're looking to um, compete in sectors where it requires a highly educated workforce. And in fact, young people today um, are being prepared to go into these new technologies and new fields. The university, uh, Mondragon University, has two years ago developed a new degree in innovation and young people are being challenged to go to different parts of the, the world to look at innovations and learn from what they see in those other places and then bring that back. Um, and similarly, they get to intern in uh, the research and development firms and in Ceylon and, and different ones of the cooperatives with the intention that they will be the next generation leading and um, working in the cooperatives. So 10% of Mondragon's profits go back, are reinvested into new co-ops, into new investments of a variety of sorts, and in greater internationalization. 8% of their uh, investment is in research and development. And I thought it was noteworthy that 21.4% of their sales last year were in new products and services that didn't exist five years previously. So if you move to the, the next slide. Um, this gives you an idea of the structure of the group, and what you can see is that they have a financial group, a retail group, they have the industrial group, um, and as you can see, the automotive components, um, these are the sectors that are most directly involved with um, the auto industry. Um, engineering and capital goods, they, they have had... Um, a, a firm that used to work on starting up new co-ops actually became a co-op out of that group. And the machine tool sector is, is a very well-respected sector and a leader in, in the European machine tool sector. They're, they are, have been involved in, in um, China for several years selling their products there and also in India. So if you move to the next slide, it gives you an idea of where in the world they are working. And you can see that they actually have a corporate delegation here in the U.S. And Gar could tell you more about what types of things they're doing in Cleveland and, and Pittsburgh. Um, but they've for a long time had offices in Detroit because of their relationship with the auto industry. Um, and their plant in Mexico was actually a way to try and find their way into the U.S. market. Um, there was a question earlier about cooperatives and other parts of um, the um, world, and Mondragon has um, had operations in, in, the, in Latin America, in um, Brazil, and previously they were also in Argentina, and they often will look for opportunities to work with other cooperative groups as a form of solidarity. Um, the other thing I wanted to share with you, if you go on to the next slide, is the just some basic statistics on their performance. And what you'll see here is that Mondragon has felt the impact of the um, recession, as have other parts of, of the world. But they are hopeful that, um, that they see changes happening in terms of their performance. And in fact, their profits for 2010 tripled those of 2009. Uh, they did lose one cooperative in 2009. It had 35 workers, and those workers have been able to transfer to other co-ops. And the two sectors that have been most impacted by the recession have been the household appliance and the retail co-op, Eroski. Um, I wanted to mention, I, I, in, in looking at um, the impact of the recession on Mondragon, I looked at unemployment statistics for the region. and. It was interesting to see that the official unemployment in Spain for the first quarter of 2011 is 21.29%. In the Basque country, it's 11.61%. And in Gipuzkoa, which is where Mondragon is located, uh, uh, it's 8.98%. And in fact, 70% of the workforce in the Alto Deva region, which is where Mondragon is located, are employed in cooperatives. So I do think you can see 
the um, impact of having cooperatives on the local economy. Um, I was told in May that 500 workers are currently laid off, but this is a, actually an, op, an optimistic picture because they had over 1,000 workers out of work last year. Also of note is youth unemployment in the Basque region is actually 15 percentage points less than the rest of Spain. So I think the cooperatives do have an impact on the local economy in terms of job security and job preservation. I want to say something about um, this question of how the cooperatives are able to preserve jobs. Um, they have a, a, a number of intercooperation agreements. If we could move to the next slide. And this intercooperation works on a number of levels. One is that within their sectoral groups, they generally contribute 15 to 18 percent of net profits to the group. And this is a way of being able to share profits and losses across the group. Um, this is something that was developed back in the 1980s in response to a recession and how to level out the ups and downs for folks. The other thing that they've done going back to the late 70s is they recycle workers. Um, and by that I mean that if a cooperative has a work stoppage, um, workers, including professional staff, are placed into a pool of workers and can be recycled into other cooperatives that are able to absorb the workers. Now when that happens, often the workers are going into work where they need retraining. And it, if the work is work that was that is compensated at a lower pay scale than what they were doing in their own cooperative, which is typical, then they have a social insurance firm that called uh, Lagunaro that steps in and the insurance pays for the training and also pays for the differential on people's um, earnings. So the, the social insurance program, the recycling of workers, as well as their commitment to bring jobs back into the Basque country through engineering innovation are three ways that I see that they are able to create a, a strong and continuing um, uh, opportunity for workers in the cooperatives. Um, finally, I should mention that when workers are laid off, as those 500 workers are, they receive 80% of their wages. Um, workers contribute 1% of their salary to the insurance fund. Um, historically, and this was recently raised to 2%. So 30,000 workers are in the insurance fund, and it covers 146 cooperatives in the region. Um, and so uh, finally, I would just say that I think the Mondragon is a, a good example because it's successful in treating workers as a fixed course while maintaining a commitment to their community. And as we heard in the earlier remarks, I think that the, these are key um, aspects that we need to address in trying to make changes in the U.S. economy and elsewhere.